Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameJube. And welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, we'll be doing something a little different. In this video, we'll be recapping the story and characters from our third concept restaurant, the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland Pizzeria. So recently, we've had some new subscribers join the channel. So this is a great way to get caught up with the previous videos. Or if you're a long time viewer, then have fun reliving all the previous character concept moments. So as always, I will just state that everything in these videos is purely fan made. So all the characters and the restaurant are our own creation and they're not really linked with the overall FNAF universe and FNAF lore. These are just a creepy cool story that we get to tell and we hope you enjoy the recap. And lastly, before we start today's video, do be sure to subscribe to GameJube as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Alrighty, well, let's get into our recap of the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland Pizzeria. So our story begins at the Water Wonderland Pizzeria, an ocean-themed Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria with a whole range of sea creature-themed attractions. Along with these attractions were the animatronic characters. So for the first character we were introduced to, we had Sam the Shark, an animatronic modelled after the Great White Shark. They were given a bright blue and white colour scheme, their mouth was filled with many pointy teeth that were made of rubber, of course. The internal hardware and software they used for Sam's body was something the engineers have never seen before. They had no idea where these parts came from or what mysterious country they were manufactured in. Sam was the keyboard player for the Under the Sea Band. After an unfortunate accident involving two younger guests ripping off Sam's fins, they were then put out of commission until they could be repaired. Sam also needed some software updates as well. So the pizzeria decided to call up IT. When the IT guy showed up, curiosity got the best of them and they managed to fool around with Sam's mysterious programming. They accidentally triggered Sam's rogue AI and ever since then they've been hell-bent on attacking the security guard. Throughout the night, Sam attempted to enter the security office to eliminate the player. The Water Wonderland security office was different from all the others. There was the left and right doors, but there was also a large roller door at the end of the room. The roller door could be closed, but it would take much longer than the other doors. The player would need to keep up with all of Sam's attempts to enter the security office. If they failed to do this, they wouldn't be in for a good time. For the next character we have, Sid the Squid. One of the more unique looking Freddy Fazbear animatronics, Sid proved to be quite the interesting character. So Sid was designed after the Atlantic Colossal Squid. Sid was one of the only Fazbear animatronics to have multiple extremities and joints and servos for free movement. So Sid's role up on stage was that of the xylophone player. But performing up on stage wasn't their only job. They were also the mascot for the Water Wonderland Sushi Bar. This was a miniature sushi restaurant that was aimed at the adult audience and offered more food and beverage options for parents who didn't feel like eating greasy pizza and sugary soda. Whilst posing as the mascot, Sid observed the sushi chefs with their razor sharp knives. They wanted to be just like them. They wanted to trade in their soft plastic knives for the real thing. One time, Sid got their tentacle on one of the real knives and went to show it to one of the guests. Fortunately for the little guests, their mother pulled them away just in time. One night, one of the chefs left the knife cabinet open accidentally. Eventually, they got their hands on the real thing and couldn't wait to show off the deadly sharp knives to the security guard. But unfortunately for the poor security guard, if Sid showed off these knives, they wouldn't be very careful. The player had to ward off this excited squid to survive the night. Sid would be able to approach from all three doors. 
If the player managed to cut off one of Sid's tentacles, then this would be quite dangerous for the player. They would need to duck underneath the desk and wait for the severed tentacle to run out of power. If the player couldn't keep up with all of these advancements, then they'd be in for one deadly show and tell. Now we come to Lucy the Anglerfish. Lucy was designed after the mysterious anglerfish from the deep. She was given a dark purple colour scheme with large eyes and many pointy teeth. Lucy also had an antenna with an LED globe on the end that would glow and illuminate the darkness. She didn't actually perform in the Under the Sea band. Instead, she was a part of an educational program that taught kids about the scary yet friendly creatures of the deep sea. Lucy was purposely designed to look frightening to teach kids that although some things may look scary, they are also friendly. The miniature aquarium housed a number of strange looking creatures including their very own anglerfish. Lucy was quite fond of her little friend and could even communicate with it. But after an unfortunate small scale earthquake, all the tanks cracked and flooded the deep sea aquarium with Lucy inside. Lucy was left inside the aquarium for days, whilst the workers decided how to get them out and save the fish as well. Eventually they drained the water and bagged up all the fish. Except for one tiny anglerfish that they missed. Lucy stood there as she watched her little friend slowly run out of air. After watching this, Lucy was never the same. The workers couldn't remove Lucy from the aquarium either. After pushing and heaving with no results, they decided to leave her in there and lock her up. From time to time, the security guard was asked to go inside and check in on her. One time, the guard found a little shriveled up anglerfish laying on the ground. They picked it up and decided to flush the poor dead creature down the toilet. After seeing the guard do this, Lucy had it out for them ever since. They needed to make them pay for what they did to their little friend. Throughout the night, Lucy would try and enter from all doors. In some cases, Lucy could make her presence known with the glow of her antenna. Sometimes it would be hard to see if Lucy was actually there in the darkness. The player would have to make sure she wasn't there or they'd be in for a frightful surprise. We come to the fourth character at the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland. And this character was Barry the Turtle. Barry was quite the unnerving looking animatronic. They were modelled after the sea turtles, but the engineers were not very successful in making them look like a friendly character. Barry's role up on stage was that of the bongo player. On some occasions, Barry's creepy face would often cause some of the children to be frightened. So the staff would have to put an old Freddy mask on their face to make them look less creepy. They were due for a visual upgrade eventually, but they had to make do with this appearance until then. Throughout the day, people would always stuff their garbage in Barry's shell. This caused their inner workings to gum up and their plastic outer shell to crack. The establishment ordered Barry a new shell and had them fitted with it in a few days. Barry liked their new shell but they thought their old one was being put to waste. Someone else should be wearing such a nice shell. So Barry set out to find the perfect person to cram into their old shell. But unfortunately for them, they couldn't find anyone who matched their specific shell requirements. That was until they came across the security guard. They were the perfect size and shape to fit their old shell. As Barry made their way to the security office, the player had to be on high alert. Whenever they saw them, they would need to close the roller door immediately. 
But in some instances, Barry would bring their old shell and use it to hold open the roller door. This would allow him to crawl underneath and access the security office. When this happens, the player needs to hide until Barry eventually walks away. Whilst hiding, the player couldn't do anything. They'd have to guess when they were gone and get back to work. If they got up too early, they'd be in for an uncomfortable new shell fitting. So now, this brings us to the final character at the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland. And this final character is Eddie the Eel. Eddie was modelled after the Moray Eel. Despite how intimidating the Moray Eel may look, the engineers designed Eddie to have more of a friendly and goofy looking appearance. Now, Eddie's role up on stage was that of the accordion player. They would be up on stage playing their happy tunes with the rest of the band. So, as we all know, the manager at the Water Wonderland Pizzeria cared more about saving money and less about the safety of the staff and guests. This has been evident from the discounted hardware and software that was purchased from a mysterious foreign country. Also, the cheap glass that was purchased for the aquarium that cracked and shattered with a very low level earthquake. And the cheap plastic shell that was purchased for Barry that managed to get damaged and cracked. So, when it came to sourcing parts for Eddie the Eel, the manager travelled far and wide to multiple different Fazbear locations to grab whatever free spare parts they could get. The manager sourced their head from quite an old establishment. The mechanism in their jaw was something called a spring lock mechanism. The spring lock jaw was truly a terrifying thing to work with. Any sign of moisture around the mechanism and it would clamp shut immediately. The repair workers dreaded doing any maintenance and repairs on Eddie. So one night after a busy weekend at the pizzeria, one of the repair workers had to work on Eddie. They've done this nerve wracking task quite a few times. But every time they did it, it always feels like the very first frightening time. But before they knew it, they've nicked their finger on a sharp edge right at the back of Eddie's mouth. All of a sudden, Eddie's jaw clamped down in an instant with a disturbing snap and crunch sound. Unfortunately, Eddie's jaw was clamped so tight they needed to do an emergency amputation. The worker was immediately transported to a hospital and was in a stable condition. The worker's severed hand was still trapped inside their locked jaw. None of the employees could open their jaws. They needed someone to help them remove it straight away. And the only one who was at the pizzeria was that security guard. Whether they wanted to or not, Eddie was going to force them to remove this horrific hand. So the player needs to keep an eye on the monitors to track Eddie's movements. They typically would always start out in the repair room. When they would make their way towards the main roller door, the player would need to shut it immediately. Eddie would also be able to appear on either side. As the night goes on, Eddie would be more and more persistent and try to enter the room. The player needs to keep juggling all of their attempts to enter the office. If they can't keep up with Eddie's movements and let him slip inside the office, then they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So that's all we have for the characters for the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland Pizzeria. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting and subscribing as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below which character was your favourite. Alrighty, well until the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.